Before you go and spend your money on Topaz Photo, you need to understand the things that I'm gonna show you in this video. Uh, to start this video, I'll tell you that I've been a Topaz Labs user for years, originally starting on Denoy's sharpening gigapixel programs, uh, which were standalone apps, and they were eventually left behind with their features merged into one overall encompassing software called Topaz Photo AI. Up until a few weeks ago, this was the Topaz's uh, marquee software to use. Uh, now these programs all offer denoise and sharpening capabilities that were simply unmatched in the industry in my opinion. You can see that in many of the videos I've made on my channel in the last couple of years. One of the key selling points of the software was the ability to buy it outright, meaning that you own that software and any updates to that software for a year after your purchase. This is pretty standard in the photo editing industry and for the first couple of years the updates were never really significant enough to warrant you needing to buy the software every year which was really nice as a consumer unfortunately topaz eventually followed suit with most other major software companies um, this is news in the last few weeks um, understanding that in order to get customers to keep buying and to bring in more revenue, they had to introduce major updates to turn those one-time buyers, such as myself, into customers who purchase again and again. Like a lot of companies, I think every year they would have a marquee feature that you couldn't miss out on. And the marketing team was really skilled at selling this feature and making you feel like you had to purchase the next upgrade. You had to repurchase the software if you wanted to use those newer features and continue to get uh, upgrades and updates. Uh, rather than allow Allowing users to purchase the original three apps, which were $80 for Denoise, $80 for Sharpen, and $100 for Gigapixels, meaning that most photographers like myself who just want the Denoise and the Sharpen could spend $160 and get the two apps they need, um, they were all merged into that one app, Topaz Photo AI. So Topaz Photo AI did run you $200, so you were gonna have to spend a little bit more money, um, but it did give you a few more features. It gave you a lot of the features available in Gigapixel, so in that case, you can argue that there was actually good value in it. And having all those features under one roof was nice. It started out fantastic and photo AI was definitely the industry leader um, at the time that it came out. But over time with each update, the results seem to be getting worse in the eyes of Topaz. I think that better and improving the software meant removing more noise and creating a sharper image when in the eyes of the photographer like myself, better results didn't necessarily mean removing more noise or making the image sharper, but they it just meant making the photos look more realistic and fix optical issues in the photo. So Photo AI, in my opinion, was headed the wrong direction lately, and I've made videos updating my point of view on their software over the last year. Certainly still has its uses, um, especially for people that are trying to do photo recovery and that kind of thing, but for a photographer like myself, it was getting uh, really frustrating. It was really limited when compared to other software that gives better results, um, such as DxO Pure Raw. I've created a video on that, and I'll link that here if you wanna check that out. But just like before, um, Photo AI continued to get new features, that really kept you in the game and kept the money flow coming for Topaz um, and releasing things like features that allow you to completely refocus blurry images, adjust the lighting um, or do color balance, preserve faces, preserve text, so many more other features like that. So while these features were fantastic for those scanning their grandpa's old images they found in the attic, uh, I don't really think that there are a lot of photographers out there who really needed those features. Those are more for like photo recovery, maybe one-time use kind of thing. The more the software was updated, the more I found myself going back to the legacy denoise and sharpen programs, which ultimately gave much better results. It was really frustrating because I felt like photo AI was going in the wrong direction with the models that they were using for denoise and sharpen. Unfortunately, you can no longer buy these programs and it's no longer updated, but it still works great for those of you that may have bought it in the past. If you don't own it though, sorry, there's really nothing that you can do. All that brings us to the latest rendition, which just came out a few weeks ago. Topaz Photo AI got a rebrand to Topaz Photo. So it's the same thing, just minus the AI at the end. And it comes with a dreaded pricing structure to say the least. Now the software is sadly only available by monthly subscription, which is a model that we know that consumers, photographers do not like. Everyone complains about Adobe's subscription model to where you have to pay monthly to get the software. Now companies like Adobe can get away with it because they have that huge market share and they have the industry leader, but Topaz has a lot of competition. And so they may find that this structure doesn't really work quite as well. 
Now, if you bill yearly, the price remains the same at $199 um, as the Topaz Photo AI was before this update. But if you bill monthly, you're going to pay $21 a month, which results in about $252 a year plus tax, which is a 25% increase to the price. Now, worst of all, this $21 a month pricing is only available for those who want to make an annual commitment, meaning you are contractually obligated to pay for 12 months, so there's no getting out of it. So it's really like paying for it annually, except you just pay monthly, but you basically contractually agree that you're going to pay for a whole year. In my opinion, the whole purpose of paying month to month is so that you can get out of something if you decide you don't like it. If you want to use the software for a month and see if it works for you, great, because there's no free trial. Um, but unfortunately, you can't do that. If you do want to have that luxury of getting out of it at any time, you will not get that $21 a month price. You instead will owe a whopping $39 a month or $468 a year before tax, which is absolutely ridiculous. Just for comparison, that's double the price of Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop combined, all for the purpose of denoising and sharpening your image, one of which you can already do comparably well in Lightroom to begin with. Uh, now, of course, the software can do more than just this, but for the, the bulk of photographers like you and me, these are features that we are most looking for to use in a software like this. So now that we've covered the price, let's get into the actual software itself. And the bad news just keeps coming in. In the current state, Topaz Photo is essentially exactly the same as Topaz Photo AI. There are a few new beta features and Super Focus is out of beta on Topaz Photo, whereas it was in beta on Photo AI. But I really can't find any noticeable difference between the two programs when it comes to Super Focus, Sharpen, or Denoise and the results that they offer. Topaz Photo also offers an autopilot mode that automatically applies edits to Denoise and Sharpen uh, as it sees fit. This can help you save a little bit of time and I can see it being useful if you're someone like a wedding or sports photographer editing a whole gallery at once. But for me personally, I spend a lot of time with each image that I want to edit so I want maximum control and I don't use features like this and I suspect a lot of you guys are in the same boat. Now updates are of course coming in the future I'm sure but Topaz Photo AI actually got worse after its conception and I seriously wonder if the same thing is going to happen here. Topaz Photo AI lasted just three years and now it's been totally reskinned. Sadly unlike Topaz Photo AI you never actually own Topaz Photo so you can only use it as long as you keep paying. The older Photo AI and even Denoise or Sharpen allows you to continue to use the program. I haven't paid in a couple years and I'm still using those programs. And while I don't have access to updates, they're generally not important or not needed. This new software, you never own it. You are permanently leasing it. As soon as you stop paying, you will no longer use that software anymore. Now, when you consider some of the other options on the market, Topaz barely outperforms Lightroom in most circumstances when it comes to denoising. And it, I honestly don't think that it works quite as well as DxO Pure Raw 5, in my opinion, when it comes to denoise. Now, however, Topaz is still the premier option when it comes to fixing completely blurry images. I threw this photo of this bear in there that I totally missed the focus. You can see the results were pretty decent, um, but they do often make your image appear really AI generated if done on an image that is too blurry or too out of focus. So there's certainly the right kind of image. Uh, that you need in order to get this to work. Now, truly, I'm disappointed that Topaz Photo doesn't work any better. Um, I paid for this with my own money. I honestly thought, you know, maybe Topaz is turning a page with Photo AI. Photo AI went downhill. Maybe Topaz Photo is going to be different, but sadly, it is truly just reskinned. Topaz Photo was, or Topaz Photo AI rather, was once a top tier option for photographers who needed a denoise and sharpening option. But sadly, the competition really has caught up. Topaz continues to release these new products that just feel like reskins. And I'm not sure how many more times I'm going to go on this cycle of wasting my money while they just reskin the same products. Um, and it makes me and probably a lot of you guys feel like it's just a cash grab while they can, which ultimately results in them reeling in as much cash as possible before, you know, who knows, potentially selling out to someone like Adobe or another major player in the game. Now, if you're someone looking to denoise and sharpen your wildlife, landscape, portrait, or sports images, Topaz is certainly going to do the job. But I do personally think that DxO Pure Raw 5 is going to do it better and for about half the cost. Plus, you buy it and you own it outright. There's not this notion of all these updates every year or so where you have to buy the new version. Um, DxO generally doesn't do that. 
Topaz really is designed for people that are looking to recover very, very poor images to fix them um, and people who don't care if their images have kind of an AI look to them. But if you're a photographer like myself, you're looking to fix some minor optical issues and noise problems, this is not really the software for you, unfortunately, anymore. Um, despite on their website it says, you know, used by thousands of professional photographers, I think a lot of people like myself are in the same boat. We used to love the software and it's just heading in the wrong direction now. I'm not sponsored to tell you all this, but I will include my video and affiliate link down below if you do choose to check out DxO. Um, now, and of course, I have affiliate links for all the software. So if there was a better option or if Topaz was better, I would simply just tell you that and give you the link there. Um, but as I've spoken so highly of Topaz in the past, I felt like it was only right for me to update my thoughts in a new video as the software has evolved. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Let me know if you guys have tried any of the Topaz products lately. If you've tried Topaz Photo AI, if you've tried regular Topaz Photo, let me know what you think. If you think uh, they're working for you, if they're headed the wrong direction or just any of your thoughts or if you have any questions let me know down below um, i am going to cancel my subscription to topaz photo i was really really disappointed in how it performs but i do have a little bit of time i can still test some things out if you have questions now, hey if this video was helpful for you make sure to leave me a like and a subscribe helps me to continue to grow my channel and continue to provide you some great videos that are going to help you to improve your photography otherwise i really really appreciate you guys being here my name is austin jackson we'll see you guys next time